Hello again, my name is Sandra Isenamafe and welcome back to Business Banking Consultant and Otoe Champo has described as prudent a new initiative by the Bank of Ghana to improve lending to businesses. Governor of the Central Bank has announced that the initiative which will take off immediately will result in 2% of banks' reserves being set aside to support small business in an Otoe Champo told Joy Business this could have not come at a better time. The history of it is it originated from the banks in the sense that they said the pressure first was through the president asking them to reduce their interest rate. So the argument was that, okay, of the 400 million we have, 10% of that is kept at BOG at no interest rate. So if that is the case, give us access to some of that 10% and then we could lend it at a lower rate. So the releasing 2% here at BOG will be resident here. And then when the banks evaluate projects that they feel you know, are bankable projects, then they will apply and the funds will be released uh, to be lent. Now the rate is what is yet to be determined. Then the governor said they are meeting the association on Wednesday. So the rate, we don't know what rate it will be, but definitely it will be lower than the 23% average lending rate that the banks are quoting presently. Do I get from you that um, all the, 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 the commercial banks uh, are on board with this proposal, or it came from them, yeah. or something more of a regulatory fiat? No, it came from the banks. So all the 23 banks are involved. Doesn't it again raise questions, and I, I come back to my question about uh, the fact that there, there, there are several mechanisms that are already in place to ensure that rates are down for everybody in the market. Why should there be this deliberate policy? It just, it just doesn't it mean that the system itself is not working. No, the system is working, but this is part of the processes to ensure that the um, lending rates are lowered. Because the, if you recall, the governor identified some of the factors that are leading to high rate. One of them is, in fact, software cost. And software cost is not within the control of the banks. Because, unfortunately, uh, our, you know, Kwame Nkrumah or Kumasi Legon is not producing the software. So they are all bought from outside. So, therefore, it's not uh, within the control of the banks to reduce software costs. So therefore the argument is try to help them to find a way of lowering the cost of credit to customers. And this is one of them. Someone is saying that low cost of credit is a function of the economy. If inflation rates are down, if I can identify everyone in the market, if people are paying back their loans, obviously the rates will come down. Your government is not borrowing too much to uh, crowd out small businesses and all the areas. Rates will automatically come down. Some of these things are seen as artificial measures that are not, that wouldn't last long and sometimes it backfires. No, it's a, it's a practical way of intervening in a free market economy. In the free market economy, when you get an externality, then you intervene to try and correct it. And what you are seeing with the high interest rate that uh, lenders are, are giving, the uh, reasons they give, we've already enumerated. And, and when you, are there, you, you go through, then you see that there has to be some intervention. And so this is one of the interventions that is being put in place. Mm -hmm. Even though life is said to have improved for many Africans in the past 20 years, there is a going sense actually that um, uh, the progress is slower than it should have been. Following this, some experts fear the continent could miss out on attaining the African Union's Agenda 2063 as well as the Sustainable Development Goals Director of Knowledge and Learning at the African Capacity Building Foundation, Herbert Robinson, has been analyzing the capacity of African countries to determine what they need to do to promote inclusive, sustainable development within the context of the SDGs. The challenge before us. Africa's development efforts, including the achievement of the SDGs, are being hobbled by severe capacity deficits, often in the form of shortage of critical skills deficits in leadership, inhibiting mindset, and weak institutions. 
This has severely hampered the ability to implement existing policies and development strategies across the continent. The persistent implementation gaps, good development strategies and policies not translating completely to good development uh, outcomes or desirable development outcomes, including sustained economic growth, structural transformation, employment, greater equality, and poverty eradication. Meanwhile, Minister for Planning, Professor George Yaojan Bafo, has linked most of the issues faced by African economies like Ghana to an ineffective um, statistical database. One of the major bottlenecks we need to confront relates to the weak capacities of our institutions. This is not a problem peculiar to Ghana alone. The 2019 Africa SDGs Index and Dash World Report finds that one of the main challenges of implementing the SDGs across the continent is lack of capacity in the civil service and among civil societies. Another challenge is the lack of statistical capacity needed to monitor Agenda 2030. Indeed, the World Bank ranks Sub-Saharan Africa only above the Middle East in its latest scores on statistical capacity. Yet, we are required by the SDG target 17.18 to significantly increase the availability of high quality, timely, and reliable data by 2020. Not 2030, 2020, which is just maybe a few days from now. It is for this reason that policy and capacity imperatives for the SDGs has been on the present priority list since its appointment as co-chair of the SDG advocates. As you may recall, one of the first initiatives the president took after his appointment as co-chair of the SDG advocates was to host a high-level Africa roundtable on mobilizing support and accelerating implementation of the SDGs. Crude oil traded for $63.94 a barrel today. Gold went for $1,459.63 an ounce. The Community News Update is up next. Business tonight. I am Sandra SNM Appen with the small news on our website, myjoyline.com forward slash business. Do have a great day.